Hey there, storytellers, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to day 18 of Bookmas. Today's video is going to be another wintery fun bookish tag. So today's book tag is called the 12 Days of Christmas book tag, and it is inspired by the song The 12 Days of Christmas. You know the one. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me and so on and so forth. So each question is inspired by a number in the song and the sort of multitude of gifts that end up being given <laughs> to the end of it. But without any further ado, let's get into this. And if you wanna play along, the questions will be down in the description below. Question one is a partridge in a pear tree. What is your favorite standalone? And for this, I have to go with The Hobbit. I do have quite a few standalones that I really enjoy, but as I've gotten older, my love for The Hobbit has only grown and I think it's only fair to say that it is my favorite standalone. Question two is two turtle doves. What is your OTP or one true pairing? And for this, I went with Simon and Baz from the Simon Snow trilogy. Not because I don't have other sort of OTP couples, but because I kind of used that series that they're in in another answer and I was trying to avoid overlap. So I picked between some of my OTP couples and Simon and Baz came out on top. Question three is three French horns. What is the best trilogy that you've read? And for this, I use the series that my other OTP is in, and that is the Also's trilogy by Deborah Harkness. And my other OTP would have been Diana and Matthew, but alas, like I said, trying not to overlap. So I used them to answer my favorite trilogy. Question four is four calling birds. What is your favorite book series? A series being four or more books long. And for this one, I struggled with because I don't think I've actually finished many series that are actually that long. <laughs> so I was kind of like trilogy is kind of where I cap out. I've realized it seems to be a personal thing, but I actually ended up going with the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. Yes, the first three books center on one mystery and the fourth one centers on a totally different mystery and it's just its own little contained thing and it could kind of be qualified as a standalone, but I do think it's fair to call them a series because it follows the same characters that we meet in the Truly Devious sort of trilogy you know, surrounding the truly devious case itself. So I think it's fair enough to call it a series and it's definitely up there as a favorite. Question five is five gold rings. Who is your favorite villain or antagonist? And for this, there were so many choices that I could have gone with, but I went with one that I actually hadn't thought of till I saw the book at the library the other day. It's not that I don't think about the books, it's that I didn't specifically think of this character, and that is a legend from the Caraval series. He is definitely kind of an anti-hero. I wouldn't call him a straight up villain, but he's definitely not a good guy either, and he's a lot of fun. So I think for now he's up there as a favorite. I can't think of any other answers, so he's gonna have to do. <laughs> Question six is six geese laying. What is your favorite world or world building? For this one, to av again avoid some overlap, I guess I could have said Middle Earth, and that would have contained the sort of worlds within Lord of the Rings. But to avoid the overlap, because The Hobbit takes place in Middle Earth, I said Narnia because they're both pretty much up there. I love both of these worlds a ton, but I was feeling wintry, so I went with Narnia as a favorite for this one. Question seven is seven swans of swimming. What is your favorite animal sidekick? And for this one, this is where I gave up on trying not to overlap my answers with other series because I legitimately could not think of an animal sidekick in any of the stories that I've read other than Korra in Shadow of Night and The Book of Life from the All Souls trilogy. Korra is a water drake and she's kind of sassy and you know, she's like a dragon that thrives in fire and air and water. She's great. Um, but she's the only animal sidekick I could legitimately think of off the top of my head. So I went with Cora. Question eight is eight maids of milking. Which book or series takes food and beverages to a whole new level? And I thought of a story that didn't overlap with my answers, but my true heart answers The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy that The Shire just takes food to this whole other cozy place that most people take for granted you know they kind of just view it as very utilitarian and they just really value it and it's so simplistic but so beautiful and oh, it's just a whole other vibe but I also thought of another novel that wasn't an answer that I already said and that is Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop 
this takes the beverage of tea to a whole new level in terms of magical realism. So it's a magical realism story in which the tea helps Vanessa use Aunt see the future and Vanessa has that gift but she goes about it differently if I remember correctly. And it's just a whole other answer to where food is kind of elevated past that sort of bland utilitarian view of it. Question nine is nine ladies dancing. Who is your favorite kick-ass female lead? And for this I went with N Salta from the Shadow Games series. N, actually, ironically, Nine Ladies Dancing, N starts out as a dancer from a finishing school and she goes in search of her missing mother in the city of Sim and discovers oh, there's a whole lot more to her story than she could have ever imagined, but by the end of it, N is pretty kick-ass and I definitely enjoyed her growth a lot. I enjoyed her from the beginning. She was always kind of sassy and willing to stick up for herself, but she goes even stronger than that and I loved it. Question 10 is 10 Lords Leaping. Who is your favorite leading lad? And while I haven't read him in his own leading role stories yet, and I've only experienced him as a side character in the Grisha trilogy, but I know I'll love him as a leading lad, and that is Nikolai Lansov. He is a snarky pirate troll basically. Not a literal troll. Like, he likes to troll people. He likes to mess with them, basically. And uh, I just love him. He's so much fun to read. And he was, like I said, only a side character in the Christian trilogy. So I'm sure I will love him as his own leading lad in the, what is it, Rule of Wolves in King of Scars or the other order. I don't know what his duology is called, but I'm sure I will love him in his own duology. Question 11 is 11 Pipers Piping. What is your favorite book or bookish thing that deals with music, whether it is directly part of it or it just references it? And for this one, I struggled a little bit, but ended up saying that Daisy Jones and the Six is one of my favorite bookish books that deals with music. It's about a fictionalized band and it's kind of told in sort of flashback interviews like that the band members gave. It's a really cool way to do a historical fiction novel and I really enjoyed it but it is all about the band and their music and I do love music so it was a real treat. And last but not least question 12. 12 drummers drumming and I just realized that I wrote my answer down having read the question wrong. The question is actually, what is your favorite read of this year? And I thought it said, what is your favorite read this time of year? <laughs> so for my favorite kind of read this time of year, I said something hopeful, happy, maybe romantic. But my favorite read of the year, which is what the question is actually asking, <sighs> Now I've put myself on the spot. I mean, it's kind of a cop out, but my favorite read of the year was my reread of A Discovery of Witches. I really loved the rest of the series. So I guess that's my answer. The All Souls trilogy was my favorite read of the year, but in specific, my reread of A Discovery of Witches was really my favorite read of the year. I got super, super into it. And I'm definitely glad I was introduced to the series by my friend Hannah, because now I'm obsessed and it's a favorite. And I would have never known that had I not tried it when she suggested it for book club. So thanks, Hannah. But that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by leaving a like down below. And if you want to keep up with me and all my bookish adventures, you can go ahead and click the subscribe button. And of course, I absolutely highly recommend that you ring the little bell so that you don't miss a beat because it will notify you every time I post a new video, which in the month of December for 25 full days is going to be every single day, which means we have eight more days, eight more days, I think, if I counted right on the spot here of bookmas to enjoy. That's all right. We have a little over a week and it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope. So I will see you guys tomorrow with a new one. Bye.